This is Agronomy Moment. I'm Wendell Cohen. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Agronomy Moment here on our podcast, as we do here from time to time. Joining me today is Chase Scotton with Risk Solutions, LLC, for crop insurance. You offer uh, multi peril crop insurance as well as different other products, Chase. And some of my questions recently, as I've been thinking about our own operation and as well as uh, agriculture in general, is how does that relate today with the higher prices? You know, the higher commodity prices, the change in the environment um, economically, uh-huh. is this fundamental still the same as it relates to multi peril? Uh-huh. And so I thought we would dive right in. Um, into talking about that and okay um what are your thoughts chase as we kick off on on this year just want to say thanks for having me it's uh always a, a pleasure to get to do these and um it's kind of amazing to see you know your growth around here and um i'm just uh glad to be here and and uh you know hope this can be constructive for everybody but um to answer your question um you know for us, March fifteenth is a is a big date, you yes. know, coming up where that's where the the farmer is going to, uh, you know, pick a new policy if they haven't had one before, or if you know, let's say you've set up a new entity, you're going to want to set up a new policy, or you know, let's say a father wants to get the son into the farming operation, yep. we want to have that policy set up by by March fifteenth. So, with us as agents, um, I work with my brother Trey out in Nevada, but we yes. work, you know, all through. Um, uh, southeast Kansas, Southwest Missouri, and into Arkansas. But long story short, we're going to want to have those conversations and look at different coverages this time of year to where we can know that we've got you set up in the policy and plan that works like right for you. Yes. You know, along with that, um, we'll want to make sure that um, we discuss any, you know, additions or subtractions from members of your entity, um, marriages, divorces. Um, any address changes, things, you know, things like that. And um, a lot of times farmers are going to let us know of, um, you know, an addition of ground to where we can make sure we've got that on the policy and kind of make sure everything's set up and and ready for the next year. Sure. And as it relates to um, those dates, like you said, it was March 15th. Mm -hmm. So we need to be aware that's coming right up. Coming right up. Yeah. Explain to us just a little, at least in brief, the insurance units and what that means exactly when you're trying to decide how to structure your multi peril insurance. You, you bet. Um, so for around here, um, what we see are mainly two types of insurance units. Um, we have optional units and then we have enterprise units. Um, so optional units are basically where you can collect on a farm section by section. Let's yeah. say you have the, the Smith Farm in Section 8, okay. um, and then you have the, the Jones Farm in Section 13. Yeah. Um, if you have, let's say, corn in Section 13 on the Jones Farm and it does terrible, you know, you can call me up and say, hey, I think I need to turn a loss on this specific unit. Sure. If, you know, the, the Smith Farm over here does just fine, there's no loss, we, we, we go on. So within that, within that section, you can also separate out further by share arrangement. So in section eight, you might have, you know, some cash rent ground yep. and you might have some ground on shares and optional units. Those are separated out further to where if your cash rent ground does great in section eight, but for some reason yep. something happens on your share rent ground, you know, you can collect only on that, that share rent ground in that section. So that's kind of what optional units are. And we see a good amount of our farmers in optional units. Um, it does carry a little bit higher premium versus the other option, which would be enterprise units. And the way to think of enterprise units would be a whole farm guarantee for you know the several different farms that you have that are in a crop in a specific yeah. county. Um, let's say you have soybeans in three different sections and um, you would you would get a, a guarantee for, you know, all of those farms. You know, you might have a 32 bushel guarantee on one, a 32 bushel guarantee on another farm in section 15, and let's say, uh, uh, you know, a 35 bushel guarantee on the other farm. And, you know, when you average all of those 
APH is out, it might give you a, let's say, a 34 bushel guarantee sure. across everything. So um, Enterprise Units is basically going to look at how your production was across all of those farms. And if your production is lower than that 34 bushel guarantee that it is given, that you've been you know, given, that is when we'd be in a loss situation. Okay. So, you know, Enterprise Units carry a cheaper premium. But in a way, they also carry, you know, some certain risks that a farmer ought to know about. Um, if your ground is really spread out in, in a county, you know, mm -hmm. that's yeah. something to think about. If you've got, you know, one farm up in the northwest part of the county and one farm in the southeast part of the county, you know, you know as well as I do, you know, how different soil types can be, how different yes. weather can be. Um, there's a lot of different factors that would play into account of what would cause those farms to act differently from from each other and a lot of times the case we don't want to be in is where one farm does really well one farm does poorly and then we're still over our bushel guarantee sure. so that makes sense you know it, sometimes when your farms are very spread out maybe we want to look at you know optional units where you can you know kind of have a more specific type of coverage for for those farms okay and but you would need to be you would need to be in optional units for that whole county then, right? Like if you were in the southeast and the northwest. You, you would need to, it would be something that the farmer would at least want to look at. I, you know, if I... There's more things that one could sit down and say, well, actually, we could do, do this over here. Yes. It's it, not necessarily... It, if, good. you know, the first thing we're going to ask when we're meeting with a current or a new customer is, hey, tell us... Tell us what you got going on. You know, do you have some bottom ground? Do you have some up ground? Yep. You know, where are they at? Are the soil types the same? Yep. You know, because those questions that we're asking are we're trying to figure out what we think is is the best fit for you. So if you told me, hey, I've got this farm, you know, in the northwest part of the county and it's really, you know, dry upland ground. And then I've got, you know, this ground that is, you know, 20 miles to the east and yes. it's it's kind of heavy you know, heavier dirt that does well, you know, my thought would be, okay, maybe we want to try to separate those out through optional units because it sure sounds to me like they, they perform differently during sure. the year. Sure. And not so, only that, just the weather risk of, of, you know, catching one rain in one place and one in the other. Absolutely. And when we look at um, moving on to talking about multi peril crop insurance and as it relates to what's in Missouri mm -hmm. or in our area, mm -hmm. like what percentages or do you have numbers telling us something about what, how many farmers are participating in the multi peril I do. I do. It's, it's kind of interesting. RMA puts out a summary of business for all their previous crop years. So I just went on and I looked to see what the summary of business was for in Missouri yes. for 2021. And um, it's interesting. So they had 50,724 active policies last year. Okay. And of those, 84% or 42,830 of them were in some sort of revenue protection policy. Okay. So if you'll remember, revenue protection is where you get a projected price, yes. which for um, beans, it came in at 1433. Yep. Corn came in at 590. And then, but with that projected price, you also have a harvest price. So harvest price will settle in the fall for these spring crops. Yep. So 84% of those policies are in that. And generally most of those would be either enterprise or optional like we've spoken about. They have, um, they have some other unit structures, but the majority of our farmers are in either enterprise or optional units. That mm -hmm. was just kind of the best fit for, for yep. our area. But um, the other 10% of those policies are uh, yield protection policies. Yeah. So um, that would be 5,153 are in yield protection. Um, that is where the farmer just gets a projected price. There's no harvest price attached. Um, and if you'll remember back to 2012, you know, revenue protection paid off a lot of years worth of premium for farmers just because we went from a five something you know, projected price yes. up to almost eight dollars on the harvest price. So that harvest price kicked in, and you know we we were hot and dry down here, and we paid you know a lot out on on losses at that you know eight dollar gotcha. eight dollar harvest price. Yeah.
So, so now talking a little bit about talking about the fall harvest price. Mm -hmm. What's the? Is there a maximum on the on the harvest price of what that discovery in October could look like if like if everything went higher, or how close are we to actually hitting those levels? You know, it's interesting you ask me that. You know, I've been I've been asked that question several times in the last few days, and I think it just has to do with the state of the world and how volatile our markets are. Yeah. You know, we've seen. We've seen wheat, you know, limit up, you know, for several days here in the past few weeks, and and you know, corn and beans just yes. just all over, you know, for, to the upside mostly. But the answer is there is a limit, but it is um, pretty generous to the farmer. So, like I said, we came in at fourteen thirty three projected for right. beans, yeah. five ninety for corn, and that RMA gives us a two x limit upward. So. That would be twenty eight sixty six for soybeans and eleven eighty for corn. Okay, you know I, I guess I'll never say never. You know, <laughs> with, right. with the way the world is, I I don't know I don't know you know how high these commodity prices could go, but I feel like a twenty eight sixty six upper limit eleven eighty sure feels like that would give uh, the that's farmer a, just a ton of, of guaranteed yeah. revenue. Well that's a lot of room too. I mean that's a, a lot of ceilings up there pretty high and I was just wondering if we were getting close to a ceiling or is yeah. that based upon what's discovered now? So yeah it's based on what's discovered now and then just multiplied uh, by by double. Okay, so, so by a fact. Okay, yeah. A factor two, basically. You know and really in years past we would have been looking at you know eight or nine dollar corn yes. versus you know now 1180 on on the um on the uh upside so yeah yeah interesting so now i was curious are you seeing in a general sense guys lowering their percentages of coverage this year mm -hmm. due to the higher guarantees or where are things coming in at as you think in general in a general sense yeah so in, in a way i would still say that's a you know, pretty specific to every operation. And I think every sure. farmer takes a different approach. You know, our goal as agents is first and foremost, we want to be able to cover, you know, whatever fixed costs or, or fixed costs, you know, inputs, things like that. And then, and then kind of go from there and see, yes. see what, what works for the farmer's operation. Um, so in the conversations that I've had so far, many farmers have been staying where they're at and have been happy to lock in some profit for this year, which hasn't necessarily been the case, yeah. you know, in the last years of the last few years, we're kind of coming off a pretty productive 2021 where, you know, we raised, I feel like a, you know, an above average corn crop and, and bean crop. So when we add that into that APH database, these guys kind of have, you know, some better guarantees anyway. And, from my experience, it seems like these farmers have wanted to grab that, you know, anywhere from, you know, 50 to 250, you know, $300 worth of profit that they could, that sure. they could lock in. I know that's a wide range, but yeah, it just seems like they're, they're, um, they're taking that chance to lock in some profit and, you know, sock some money away if we are hot and dry this year. Sure. What do you think far as, um, other products that might be of interest to, Growers, as far as insurance, that mm -hmm. may not be part of the basic multi parallel. What are some other things that one might consider and add to that? You bet. It's it's interesting. Um, our carriers always come out with several private products that you know can we we bring to the customer to kind of you know add to the meat and potatoes that is yeah. the multi parallel. So um, one thing that has really worked for our producers down here is Replan Extra. Um, Replant Extra doesn't carry, uh, you know, a really high premium figure yeah. with it, but it just seems like in the clay-based soils that we are, that we're in down here, and especially knowing how rough Missouri Springs can be, we gen generally see, you know, a decent amount of replant. And so what Replant Extra offers is a certain amount of dollar coverage over what you had already be be being paid in your multi parallel policy. So, sure. um, you know, we can go up to $60 extra for corn, $50 extra for beans. And, and we feel that, and it, we have the data to back it up, that it has been a good deal for the farmer, you know, historically yep. over the past, you know, eight or 10 years. So we have something like that. And, and, um, we also have private products where we can add a certain dollar amount 
onto your projected price. So, you know, if that 1433 you feel like isn't enough okay. for your soybean guarantee, yeah. we have some private products where we can add um, more onto that. Um, generally, these um, these products, you know, they're they're not terribly expensive. They'll offer you, uh, you know, if, if if you would have a claim, uh, you know, a two to four times return on your money. Okay. Um, so, you know, something that if I would say is if you feel like you want a, you know, more of a dollar guarantee than what is being offered from the projected price, you know, five ninety for corn, fourteen thirty three for beans, we can get you there. It's just all about price point. So a lot of times what we're doing is we're looking, okay, is it better to, you know, drop down a level and maybe if you're wanting if you're wanting, you know, a little more price protection, do we look in do we look at this? Sure. So the the last thing would be um, we offer uh, we offer um, hail and wind coverage, and um, okay, sure. you know that's something that I I think in certain cases you know a farmer will want to take a look at um, whether it's now or even into the growing season where hey we've got a we've got a really good corn crop out here we think it could be you know one of the best do we want to look at some wind coverage you know or do you have a hybrid or, you know, do you have a so hybrid or, or how late can we bind those? We can bind wind up to June 15th. So, okay. and then we can bind hail coverage after that. But generally wind for across all carriers is a June 15th coverage date. But, and then, but then like the replant part, like the replant extra, for mm -hmm. example, that would be 15th of March. That's a March 15th. They want to know that. They want to know that before we put, you know, seed in the ground. Sure. And one thing to, you know, I will mention about that is that, that uh, replant extra will carry um, some early replant protection. So, you okay. know, let's say, you know, you know, you have replant extra on your policy. It would, it would allow you to replant up to March 15th on your corn crop. So let's say you want to get out there, you know, March 25th, you would have, you know, some coverage there that you wouldn't necessarily have you know, on your multi peril which would kick in April 1st or after. Be, and that extra, if you want to plant early, it, that extra part would apply towards a pre, like April 1st. Yes, it, it would kick in and pay, whereas your multi peril kicks in April 1st or after. Yeah, so whatever your date is, that would be yeah. where it would kick in. Under the ideal scenario, if we have to replant, you know, hopefully somebody is planted after April 1st, and if you sign up for replant extra, you can get paid on both your multi peril or your, sure. your replant yeah. extra. But Absolutely. like I said, it's just something that we feel like has historically been good in our area and doesn't carry that, you know, that high of a, a premium to it. Absolutely. What do you, uh, you have anything else you want to add to our discussion here as far as it relates to crop insurance? Today? Um, again, I just really want to, um, you know, thank you for having me here. And I think what we offer at risk solutions is, you're really getting somebody with specific knowledge of the crop insurance program. We've been doing this yes. since 2008, but also you've got an advocate. So in us and in the carrier that we are with, I mean, we feel like you need to, and if you're in a claim sure. situation, you need to have somebody who, you know, knows the product, knows the process and is able to advocate for you on your crop insurance policy. You know, you're going to pay the same dollar no matter, you know, wherever you go. We feel you might as well have somebody yeah. committed and knowledgeable to, you know, be able to give you what we feel is the best deal out there. And not only that, make the claims process as smooth as possible for when we do have a claim. So sure. um, we just feel like that's something that we offer. And, um, you know, um, we just kind of enjoy our jobs. And, and if there is somebody out there who would, who would, you know, be looking for an agent, we would sure love to love to talk to them. Absolutely. You sure have done a fantastic job for our farm and operation and uh, have definitely moved us forward in that realm. Well, I appreciate that. The neat thing is, is, you know, one thing I didn't realize getting into this was your customers become your friends. You know yes. what I mean? So, sure. you know, I called you up this morning and yes, we talked business, we figured things out, but really we were you know, kind of hanging out for an hour and a half yes. and it's just a fun part of, you know, fun yeah. part of my job. So I, I enjoy all of our customers and being able to go and see all these different farming operations. Absolutely. And, um, moving forward to this next year, I uh, wish everyone luck and growers 
and uh, and farmers as we go forward in there. You bet. And be able to make good decisions with information that's needed is important. Um, one last thing I did want to ask you though before we do go, Chase, mm-hmm. is how long have you sold crop insurance? Like like I said, we um, started around two thousand eight, and then um, uh, okay. That's so and then my brother Trey that, came on. That would be how many years then? That's that's uh, you 14? know yeah fourteen years. Is that right? Yeah, because we're in the twenty twenty two crop year. Is that right? So and then um, my brother Trey came on with me about five years ago. So, okay. um, yep. you know, uh, we, like I said, we have an office in Nevada and, and just uh, yep. kind of work around the area. Fantastic. Everyone, thank you for joining us today on Agronomy Moment. Um, we have always tried to bring you the latest, most current information possible. If you have any questions, reach out to us anytime. Thank you again to everyone who made this show possible. See you next time. If you need help with your operation, go to topagservices.com forward slash signups to receive alerts. This is Agronomy Moment. This is Wendell Cohen, show host and producer. Thank you to all those who made this show possible. This show is over. See ya.